Hey guys, it's Ian at SS8000 Cars and as you've probably seen, today we have in the drive the McLaren 540C and the Porsche GT4 and we're going to do a comparison on the two cars. Now, what I'd like to say up front is they're not really in the same price bracket. The Porsche with all the extras would have been about 82, 83,000 pounds and then maybe a little bit extra for the film that goes over the car to protect the car. And the McLaren was almost 150,000 pounds. So quite a big difference in price. But in terms of what they offer, it's not that dissimilar. Now the Porsche has 385 HP and the McLaren has 540 HP. So there is a difference in power. The Porsche is a manual gearbox, short throw, really beautiful box to use. The McLaren is a fast shifting twin clutch automated system. I think the first thing that probably you can see immediately is that the McLaren looks from a different age. Now the Porsche is a really, really beautiful car. I utterly love the colour, but you probably expect me to say that. And I like the fact that it's based upon a Cayman, which already has the accolade of being touched by brilliance when it comes to the handling. McLaren is the new kid on the block. And of course, you'd have to stretch yourself price-wise if your budget was 80, 90K to reach the 150K that this one is. However, the base price of the McLaren 540 is actually 126k. So if you're a little bit careful with the options, and personally I don't think this car needs carbon fibre in, in the way that perhaps the 675 benefits from carbon, I do like the fact that this one has got the full leather interior. But coming back to that question of they look designed from a different age, you can see quite clearly that the McLaren it looks the supercar. I am almost 100% positive you would say the McLaren is A, the more expensive car, and B, it's the faster of the two. And there's no question that that's the way it turns out to be. The McLaren is 3.5 to 62, and the Porsche is 4.4, 4.5. So there's almost a second there, and then the 0 to 124 of the two cars. Not utterly sure what it will be with the with the Porsche, but the McLaren is 10.9. And I think you'll find that the Porsche to 124 is going to be 15, 16, 17 seconds, but I'll check that for you. It still has an immensely purposeful look. The rear wheels have been set out, I think, uh, 1.4 centimeters wider on either side than the standard Cayman and if you come fairly close you can see that actually the tires on the on the rear wheels actually are slightly wide of the body itself that comes with its own challenges in terms of the car getting very mucky at the back and the front spoiler as you can see is really seriously low and there's no lifting system on the GT4. And of all the cars I own, the GT4 would benefit from this right up there with the 675. Now, the nice thing about the 540C, an everyday car. I mean, I think the Porsche probably isn't, but we'll discuss this a little bit later. But other than the fact that you're obviously very low down uh, on the ground, it's very comfortable, it's relatively quiet, the road noise coming up from the tarmac is not excessive, so you could do a long journey. There's no question that you can use this car, because we took it all the way from where I live in, uh, in Surrey, all the way down to the south of France, and I didn't find it too bad at all. You do get a little bit of road noise generated, but that's the norm for these types of cars. Now I'd say that the, the McLaren 540C is more usable every day because there's less road noise that comes into the cabin. Now, both the GT4 and our 675 LT, you get a lot of road noise in the cabin. Now, right now, we're on one of the worst dual carriageway surfaces, so there is a bit of resonance, but it's still perfectly manageable. When we took the GT4 to the south of France last year, there was a fair amount of road noise. Now, I don't mind that, but it can get wearing after a while. If you're doing a seven hour 
journey, then there's no question that you're you're ready to get out at the end of it. I think, you know, in this car, you really could do long journeys without uh, feeling fatigued. So I think the McLaren you can use on a regular basis, and, and I have been doing so. We've had it for more than a couple of weeks now, so it's giving me a really unique opportunity not only to to drive the car but also to experience these cars on a daily basis because that's what we try to do on this channel we do actually try to give you not only what it's like to take out on a single drive but also to let you know what the real world experience of owning these cars is like and the 570s of course is is effectively the donor vehicle for this which they're absolutely the same even got the same engines down to the 3.8 twin turbo v8 but the 570 has 30 extra hp now i loved 675 obviously because i think because that's a track car first and foremost you know it looks aggressive you know they've they put enough extra on the 675 to make it look just one up from the 650 but in terms of the design of the the 540 it's a very pretty shape i like the rims too actually you know I, i'm not sure whether i'd have them in the stealth i think perhaps the black would make a statement the other thing about this car that i'm hugely impressed with is the fact that it is absolutely in the same color now i know it's become a sort of mclaren trait to have actually different colored sections here on the the air intake cover and down the side of the door it's a very intricately designed car this i i, if I just bring the camera up to here you can see it's a whole lots going on on the door and I just really really think it's been extremely well thought through because I think sometimes when you do a lot of work like that on the design when it comes to the end product it doesn't look quite as cohesive as as it might and of course if I bring you over to the GT4 there's nothing going on with the GT4 really we have the obviously the side pods here for the air to intake but primarily the the GT4 is pretty much as you see there's there's no aero scoops um, but then of course it's a naturally aspirated 3.8 six cylinder engine so it although the engine is exactly the same position as the McLaren so they're both mid-engine cars the the Porsche doesn't have so many scoops and air intakes as the McLaren seems to and as you can see the engine on the GT4 is tucked away of course the GT4 does have a huge wing. Now, it's not as big as the GT3 RS, but it's probably bigger than the GT3. I think, um, I don't like wings normally, but I think somehow, you know, the racing intent of this car is shown in the, in the rear wing. I like that. I think that's nice. The McLaren, of course, has lots of areas where you can see through to the exhaust system and into the engine. As you can see from the very back, much more aggressive diffuser than the, the GT4. But then, of course, this is a much faster car. So I suspect that downforce is even more important in this car than it is in the GT4. And then you can see the engine through the mesh. One of the things that has always slightly surprised me here is that McLaren don't allow you into the engine compartment. I don't believe. Now, I've not actually tried that. I'll have to look in the... In the manual and see because what we actually have is just a little um, area here which you can push down it flips up and you can get at the engine oil reservoir the gt4 has great ground visibility because it's a although you're low down you're sitting in a hatch and there's lots of glass everywhere so you can see the dimensions of the car and of course in the GT4 you have the rear wing and the rear wing really is at the back of the car so you know where the car is the, this particular GT4 doesn't have a rear camera and it doesn't have paint parking sensors but it's a comparatively small car so positioning it is really easy in the McLaren I think for a supercar the McLaren has quite good visibility but you really have to know your car because you can't really see the extremities of it. One thing that I do love about the McLaren is the front windshield really goes down low so you get a very good view out the front but in your rear view mirror the, the view 
around the back is, is limited and you rely on looking in your door mirrors a lot to see what's happening at the, at the extremities of the machine. But still, very easy to drive. I think when you see the car from here, you just see how low slung the McLaren actually is. It's a real supercar. The Porsche is more top level sports car and you can sort of see that it's a design that's come from the Cayman and has the standard Porsche DNA whereas the McLaren is pretty much a unique model for this market sector. And that's evidenced by the way the doors open in some ways. I mean McLaren has been faithful to its dihedral door system. They open up glide up this has the soft closed doors which I rather like actually but I mean that just looks it just looks exciting doesn't it it looks exciting at standstill I love the driving environment of this car it's absolutely beautiful well, probably true to say I love the driving environment of the GT4 but you sort of feel that you're in the digital digital age in the 540 seat whereas I think slightly you feel that you're in the analog age with the GT4. The biggest difference of course is the transmission because all McLarens are dual clutch automatics whereas the uh, the GT4 is a, a manual system which has a, a manual clutch and a gear lever in the center on the center console. It's a sort of a, a very driver. I mean, they've both got driver-focused environment, but, but here, again, it sort of has that bespoke feel. You know, that this is a much more expensive car. I like the environment. I mean, they, they actually have changed the center co console design to an extent, so you can see that the they call the floating center console, and all the controls are straight out of the standard 570S. This one's been specced with the full leather. So there's no there's no Alcantara, the the roof linings in leather, the the lining round the the rear parcel shelf, which is quite roomy. I reckon you get two or three cases in there, are all um, it's all leather round the round the edging, and then we have leather on the dash, the steering wheel. Obviously the seats are entirely lined in leather, and they're all stitched contrast stitching, which is quite nice. It looks like a grey stitching to match the. The outside colour of the the car but it, it's sort of thrown in at the top end of the sports car market so the the turbo uh, Porsche 911 the Audi R8 V10 plus it's at this sort of level but yet all of those are the sort of top versions of other cars that these manufacturers produce in their range whereas this is the bottom of the McLaren range it's beautifully uh, balanced between the requirement on these types of cars to have a stiff suspension to prevent roll and allow maximum cor cornering ability and your requirement to use every day so on the British roads which can be a bit uneven with the number of potholes it'll glide over them to an extent. I, I, I just think it's, a, it's, a, it's been very well set up this car. The GT4 opens in a traditional way, hinged from the front of the the bodywork. But it's no less exciting inside in some ways. Now obviously the colours are a bit more sombre in the in the GT4, but we've got the it's a mix of, of leather. This has the leather and Alcantara options, so it's got the, the contrast stitching which we chose in red and it's got leather on on all of the dash Alcantara on the on the roof and then the lower dash is all trimmed in Alcantara and this particular one's got the carbon fiber along the doors and the dash which I think is nice and also in the in the center console you can see what a beautiful short gear lever you have in the GT4 it's just fantastic I'm just not sure that a manual would suit the style of the McLaren but that's a completely different story. I do like owning a manual. You can see how low it is when I 
bring this down you see that the the wheel arches are only really just set above the tyres. So the visual impact I suspect on the GT4 is not as dramatic as as the McLaren. I don't it, I think you probably be quite hard pressed to come across another car at this level that has the the impact that the McLaren has in terms of visual looks. The Achilles heel on this McLaren is probably its lack of luggage but again there's quite a bit of room behind the the seats and then of course you have a decent you do have a decent amount of space in the front which I'll just show you you can see you know you get a, a couple of upright right bags in there no problem at all now I think that's probably where the that's probably where the GT4 wins over most cars of its type it doesn't have maybe quite the dramatic looks of the McLaren or anything like perhaps um, you can't see the engine to the same extent but it's very practical when loading, loading luggage and the like, and certainly I found that when I um, when I found myself um, driving down to the south of France last year, where we we had quite a number of uh, of the members of the family coming down to join us. Obviously, we ended up taking all the booze and the uh, the initial stocks of groceries, and it all fitted in here quite nicely. Although the rear boot is quite shallow, it's quite wide. But you also you can put all your coats and um, all your soft stuff uh, on top of where the engine is. There's a good there's a good space there. And then coming round to the front, I think probably a, a little bit more usable than the McLarens, even because it's it's a rectangular shape and there's really no nothing really intruding. So it's a practical, it's a practical sports car, this GT4. I have the steel brakes. I mean, I think if I was going to use this car on a track on a really regular basis, I'd probably put the uh, ceramics on. Um, the McLaren also has steel brakes, as you can as you can see. Um, and again, I suppose the same would be true of this. But I think the difference between the two cars, and I, I think one of the differences that I would point out is I think you have a GT4 rather than as an everyday car as a car that is possibly one of the best balanced cars on the road and you take it on a track on a fairly regular basis i have a a friend that actually keeps a gt4 out out at the nurburgring so and his his weapon of choice is the gt4 to take round the track now he has a gt3 rs as well which featured on our channel but you know he tends to use that as his his exciting car to drive on the roads in the UK but for a car to keep at a circuit he's chosen the the GT4 and there are a number of companies now offering performance enhancements to the GT4 to take you from the 385 brake to the 4 430 up to 435 425 435 and I think that would make a huge difference to the the performance of the car so you know, it's it's a it's a car fit for a purpose. The GT4, you can use it every day, but at the same time, this car you feel would be absolutely incredible around the track. Now, I don't want to take it away from the 540C because I've heard good things about the 540C on a track as well. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So hopefully. That gives you just a little bit of a feeling for what 
the cars can do. In a straight line, the McLaren would disappear. I rather imagine round corners, the GT4 would, would stay with the McLaren, to be quite frank. Um, it's, it's road holding is so incredibly good. Different price points, admittedly, and the McLaren certainly has more power. But in terms of driver's cars, you know, the GT4 has always been acknowledged as one of the greatest driver's cars made in the last 10 years. The McLaren is right there with it. Fantastic car to drive and exciting to drive quickly too. Do I have a preference, the GT4 or the, or the McLaren 540C? I think I would say it very much depends, as far as I'm concerned, on which car you're driving in what circumstances. So the GT4 is much more of a weekend type, have a bit of fun car. I always find it a bit of hard work just because of the clutch system to drive in traffic if you're up in London and you have a, a two hour journey home. Using the GT4 is quite hard work. This car, genuinely, it's a complete doddle. So I think that's the difference. I think for high days and holidays, probably the GT4 feels a little bit more like a track car than this does. But this has two personalities. It has it has this, so therefore the the pottering around capability, combined with the ability to really really go fast when when you want it to. Again, I suppose because of my driving capabilities, I find the GT4 when you're driving quickly just a little bit easier. But partly that's because it doesn't have so much power. Now this is an everyday car if you want it to be. The GT4 certainly is not, but they're both exciting. All right guys, well thanks for watching. It's Ian from SS8000 Cars signing off. Please make sure you subscribe.